Welcome everyone to Talk Story with John Waihei. Boy, have I got a great show for you tonight. We are going to be discussing probably one of the most interesting, uh, one of the in most interesting subjects in Hawaii. The passage of the medical marijuana law has a, a, and the issuance of, of uh, dispensary licenses or licenses have now made it possible for people to get or conveniently get uh, me medical marijuana. And this is a subject I know that, well, it, does, it may not rank way up there with the uh, rapid transit me uh, system, which uh, someday I'll have Ben Caetano on here to talk to me about. And, uh, you know, it, it's still uh, something of interest to everybody. And, and so, our guest today is Christopher Goth, and he's the executive director of the um, Hawaii Dispensary Alliance, right? And for those of you who are watching us this afternoon, I, I want to remind you that normally we are on on Mondays, uh, but this is a special show, and we will be replaying it on uh, coming Monday. But for today, Chris, thank you very much, or Christopher, thank you very much for being uh, here with us today. Tell us, what, what is the Hawaii uh, Dispensary Alliance? What exactly is it? Well, thank you, Governor. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And the Hawaii Dispensary Alliance is the trade association for the, le the legitimate medical cannabis industry in Hawaii. All right, and so are, does it, is it open to only the people who got licenses or? By no means, by no means. Now our board will be comprised of the dispensary licensees. Okay. But also uh, patients and some of those ancillary service providers that help build the physical and intellectual marketplace of the medical marijuana dispensary or the industry as a whole. You, you need to describe to me what exactly that all meant, you know. And, and, I, and, I, and I, you know, I, I should confess something. Yes, sir. All right, right up front. Um, I have actually uh, had a little bit of experience with the medical marijuana industry. Okay. Yeah? And when the licenses became available, uh, I, met, uh, I met a group of young people mostly young people yes sir and uh, and others actually that were interested in applying for these licenses okay you know and um and what i and my first reaction was oh you know i don't know about that now you got to remember that during my time as governor i always thought that we ought to do something about uh, these uh, marijuana drugs it, it was taking up too much of our resources and you know, I must have burned every field from Kauai to uh, to the end of the Big Island with the harvest, green harvests. Sure. And so, I, sure. and so that's my beginning. So here we are, like years later, and young people, graduates from our leading schools in Hawaii, asking me to uh, if I would help them in their application forms. And so I I I made it a point to learn all about what this uh, what, uh, medical marijuana was about and about its positive ef effects. And I learned many po positive things. So I, I agreed to help them uh, raise some funds. But that's the extent of my knowledge. You know, I really want uh, to know more about it. So when you're talking about licensees, ancillary services, and all of this, you, you're talking to a guy who went from burning fields to uh, actually helping people raise some resources to apply. So you, you, but you've got to tell me what, uh, what it is that we're talking about. Absolutely. Well, let's backtrack. So during the time that you were burning these fields and Green Harvest was really right. launching, that was during the Reagan administration. Yes. And the war on drugs was strong. It was thick. And public enemy number one was drugs for the most part. And then, of course, after your term, your running mate and lieutenant governor, and then of course your successor, right. Governor Ben Cayetano, helped pass the first medical marijuana legislation in the nation. Right, And exactly. that was kind of due to a relaxing of funds and the relaxing of policy. Um, and 
the government, the Hawaii state government, probably was under less scrutiny, under less pressure by the federal government to really scratch out well, I, I the illicit also, marijuana I, trade. I should also let you know that actually before the passage of medical marijuana, yes, sir. my uh, attorney general, okay. Warren Price, actually introduced a series of bills to try and lessen the penalties. Because we were having so many, I, I would say, nonviolent offenders mm -hmm. going to jail for smoking a joint, essentially. Yes, sir. And, you know, that, that was not very good policy. So Ben, at least, came in an era when things were getting a little bit more progressive and we started to at least allow for the possibility of medical treatment. Absolutely. Yeah. So here we are some 30 years later, um, after your terms, and medical marijuana is starting to progressively sweep across the nation. Right. Um, it looks like we'll have 25 medical marijuana states in the next couple of days. Um, really? Which states, uh, when you say next couple of days, which states are? It looks like um, the latest one that I saw looks like Florida may go and then eventually um, Louisiana. May go. Wow. Louisiana is very so close. So you're telling me that these little red states, oh well, Florida is going to go Democratic, so we, we kind of, but you know, these conservative states are starting to see the benefits. And let's consider 25 legitimate medical marijuana states, but there are 41 states as well as territories that have at least a CBD program, which provides for the oils. Well, you, and you, the you, you've got it. Okay. Correct. All right. You just got to where, why you're on the show. So explain to, you know, all I know about marijuana is that, uh, uh, well, all I used to know, I know a little bit more sure. now, was that it, uh, it, it had an ingredient, THC, that Correct. made you high. Right? So what so, are you talking about? So THC is the, the component that has the psychotropic effect. It makes you dizzy. It is the actual component that makes you high. Okay. And then the CBD is the cannabinoid that works in tandem with the THC but affects more of the body. And it is what is responsible for attacking cancer cells or helping um, with seizures. And those seizures specifically in the cluster form or affecting most of the youth that have these seizures. So the CBD programs where you can extract the CBD out of the flower, out of the plant, and apply that in an oil or a tincture and give that to a child. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, sir. Oil, tincture. <laughs> See, you really got to speak slowly to my generation. Okay? Fair enough. Because so, all I remember about, you know, marijuana back in the day was somebody puffing in a corner. Somewhere. Right, and we've come a very long way from someone just using marijuana to get high to get stoned, and that's not what this program is about anymore. I would hope not. Absolutely. No. I mean, there's no way that this would get passed in 25 states or potentially 25 states or even in our own state if it was about just making money and just getting high. Okay. Right? So here we are. We have actual medicine that so can be applied in many different forms from a transdermal patch to something that is nebulized or vaporized well, you're not yeah. inhaling actual smoke, so if you have a respiratory yeah, infection Yeah, because why problem, would you, if you're going to take something to improve your health, why would you smoke? Exactly. You know, I, I used to be a smoker, and, and I'm an absolute cr crusader. I mean, Against I can't it. see, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I can't see why anybody would be so but there are, dumb as to put smoke in their lungs. True, you know? but there are appropriate times when the smoke is necessary okay. for stomach issues. So there are ways nausea. to take it without smoking. Exactly. There are. There are a number of different ways. Yeah, because my brother-in-law, you know, he has this back problem. <laughs> I told Careful, him, John. I can't. I can't. You know, I, I told him, I said, you know, you, you really ought to try this stuff. He says, well, I'm not going to smoke. Sure. And that's the same thing that I have to tell my tutu, who has arthritis, who has glaucoma. I'm not trying to make her smoke it. I'm not trying to set her up with some which doctor that's going to provide her with something that may or may not work that's going to make her all dizzy when she's trying to walk around the house. Right. I don't want that. You okay. know, it's not beneficial to her. But what, we're, what the medical science is starting to provide through a very diversified array of products as well as a very diversified array of strains is that there are appropriate times. Strains. 
and appropriate ways <laughs> to take this medicine. Okay. And it's not about smoking it. And it's not about getting high all the time. So, but, okay, so CBD? Yes, sir. Right? So that works with the endocannabinoid system. So there are 24 states that have any kind of mar uh, medical marijuana. Yes, sir. There are up to 41 that allow for, in addition to the regular, I don't know. Not in addition to. Instead of. Instead of, yes, sir. Instead of. So in a very limited capacity, there are other states and territories. So there are, like, CBD. Correct, CBD only. Okay, and, and is that like, you said affects the body, like kava? More or less, yeah, that's a good way to... Right? Yeah, that's a very strong... Um, yeah, when I was it. growing up, you couldn't, you know, everybody thought drinking kava was funny. You know, you can go anywhere in Hawaii. You can go anywhere and get it, and get it. Yeah. exactly. So is that what, it's that kind of a thing. It's that kind of a thing, yes. But um, the What's the relationship to hemp? Because I know, you know, for years people, and I actually wanted to see industrial hemp brought to Hawaii. Yes, but sir. For, for years, the objection was that it was really another form of marijuana. And that couldn't be, I mean, it's true that it is a cousin to the marijuana. But that they're related. They're related. And you can get CBD but from hemp, okay. but it's not in the same level. It's, oh, it's okay. very, yeah, it's, it's very difficult to get the right amounts of CBD out of hemp. So hemp is what they make the ropes out of, and that's okay, right? That's right. the good cousin, quotation exactly, mark, exactly. or the legal cousin, mm -hmm. is it? It is, it is, and you, but you can do more with hemp than just make rope. All of the plastics that we use, and here I sound like a crusader for all things marijuana and hemp, but it's true. No, I think, I think hemp was uh, seen as a good potential replacement crop for sugar. Absolutely. You know, and uh, and I, I understand the legislature was dealing with that issue. I don't know what happened to it, but... Uh, it, the bill got passed. It did? Yes, sir. Well, I tell you what, um, oh, Representative Cynthia Thielen. Uh, yes. Well, <laughs> has been pushing that, working on that bill for since quite a while. Adam and Eve uh, <laughs> were in the Garden of Eden, you know? Uh, and, and it finally got passed. Finally got well, passed. Congratulations. She and Kanye Ling. Representative Ng did a very good, good job getting this Connelly, passed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Quite the champions. If you and will. so this is an opportunity for, okay, we're, we're diverting, but CBD. CBD. It's another component of, uh, that you get from marijuana. Yes, sir. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got 41 states. Right. They're but this is, it's still like the wild, wild west. I it's mean. the wild west. So what we're doing as the trade association for the legitimate medical marijuana industry is basically creating an industry. And when it comes back to the ancillary services, you have to have someone to build the facilities to grow. You okay. have to have someone build the facilities to retail. You also have to protect those resources and the intellectual property. So you need lawyers, you need CPAs, you need planners. You, you need, need doctors, right? Don't you, you need, need doctors, doctors to Absolutely. understand this thing? You do. You need doctors that are open to providing these certifications that recognize the medicinal benefits. And of course, we're slowly working that, but it's, we've taken on the task, the Hawaii Dispensary Alliance has taken on the task to create and introduce the continued medical education programs to these doctors. And that's part of what we do. We provide industry information, we, cre we create uh, business opportunities. Um, we're the drivers for that. So yeah. you're a thought of the um, standard bearer, I guess. We're going to take a short break. We're sure. coming back. But I, I want to talk more about, uh, yeah, about where we go from here with, in terms of standards and uh, research. I yeah. mean, medical, it seems like medical research would be, should be high on the agenda somewhere. Anyway, please join us uh, in, a few, in a minute. Aloha, welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Josh Green. I'm the host of a program called Healthcare in Hawaii. I'm a physician. I work in the emergency department on the Big Island. I also serve in the state senate, which please don't hold that against me, doesn't detract from my television program. We speak about all the big health care issues in the state. We get together on Tuesdays from 2 o'clock till 3 o'clock in the afternoon. and We try to talk about the most important issues in health care. This is a terrific venue for people to learn about health care. There are many programs on this on this station. We broadcast it later, uh, not just on the internet, but also on OC16. Thanks for joining us. Please be informed healthcare consumers.
Aloha, this is Maria Mera and I'm here to invite you to my bilingual show Viva Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 3 p.m. We're here to inform, motivate and entertain you. Join us. Hola, soy Maria Mera y estoy aquí para invitaros a mi show bilingüe Viva Hawaii en Think Tech Hawaii cada dos lunes a las 3 de la tarde. Estamos aquí para informaros, motivaros y entreteneros. Apuntaros. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe. If you're just joining us, today's guest is Christopher Garth, and he is the executive director for the Hawaii um, Dispensary Alliance. And we are talking, folks, about joints, <laughs> marijuana, medical only, right? So tell me, okay, now we, got, we got into this, at least I, I know the difference between CBD and THC you now. But uh, you, you were describing the industry. And, and what's interesting to me is well, here we are in the state of Hawaii, we've issued these licenses. People are going to be able to get a me, uh, marijuana for their medical problems. Is there any medical research going on to show how, uh, what the potential benefits or what the benefits of using marijuana may be? Sure, absolutely. There there is research, there is information, but it's in a very limited capacity. Most of the research has been conducted outside of the United States, and only now. Because of the national, yeah, okay, yes, we'll sir. get to that, but it's, why don't you continue, I'm sorry. Sure, no, no. Um, up until now, up until very recently, um, the government has been very standoffish. The federal government has been very standoffish. And with the research being done outside of the United States, there's not a lot of credit lent to those resources. Okay. So only now is the federal government starting to open the door. So uh, uh, is there like actual data that shows positive effect of uh, medical marijuana on someone that has, uh, well, let's say cancer? There is but it is not necessarily peer-reviewed to the point that it is acceptable by all of the American medical journals you or know, all of them. I, I asked my doctor, I, I have to say this, I'm not going to put his name, but I, uh, this, is, this is really uh, enlightening to me. Okay. Okay, because I asked my doctor and I, uh, when this was all going on in, in, in its early days, and, and I said, you know, um, what, you know, what is the truth about this? Does it help? Uh, uh, you know, things like cancer sure. and I think uh, the other one was uh, epilepsy yes. and, and so forth. And he said, well, yeah, it seems to have some positive effect. And I says, okay, so why isn't this more acceptable? And then he proceeded to explain uh, scientific, uh, the scientific method to me. And I said, oh, I said, well, uh, what, what does it mean? He says, the problem with medical marijuana is we don't know its negative effects. And I said, what? You're handing me drugs. You want me to take medicine that has about a dozen different uh, cautions to sure. the side effects. And, and you, 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 you're not sure about marijuana because you, you, you can't list a dozen bad side effects. And he said, yeah, unfortunately, if we knew something bad about it, then we'd feel comfortable because <laughs> we would know what to warn people about. And I don't know. Does that, does that make any sense to you at all? It, it does and it doesn't. So the issue with using marijuana in a prescribed medical sense is that there are so many strains and there are so many different ways to imbibe or apply that medicine. And then there are so many ailments that it could potentially, but because of the diversity of all the products and those strains, there's not a way to effectively track that medicine through the FDA certification process. Okay, you mentioned that, that word again, strains. Right. What, what are we talking about? So let's take apples, for instance. All right. How many different kinds of apples are there? Oh, I don't know, but my favorite's Envy. Right. <laughs> if you can find a store today that's selling Envy apples, call me up. Call the show up. <laughs> Tell me all where it is, because I am desperate for Envy apples. I think that's, that's when you plug the Twitter feed right now. Is that, yeah, 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 there is a Twitter feed over here, you know. It's uh, Tink Tech Hawaii. Yes, sir. At Twitter. I don't know how to use Twitter, but I know <laughs> that it'll pop up on the screen. So. 
<laughs> oh, aloha. Where are the older generation like us learning the benefits of THC? Right here, today. By the way, this is the question coming in to me. Just as says, aloha, Governor Waihe. Where can the older generation like us learn more about the benefits of THC, CBD, etc.? You know, I never really feel old until I talk about this subject. Because, you know, when you, you know, we just mentioned strength. By the way, the answer to the question is this show. This show is the beginning. And if anybody, I'm serious, though, about the MV apples, if anybody knows. <laughs> uh, look, uh, you know, um, <laughs> talking about strains, right? Yes, so back in the day, back in the day, I th you know, all you knew about uh, strains was, you know, like Kona Gold. Sure. Maui Waui. Okay. You know, Puna Butter. Okay. And uh, anything else was not worth doing. <laughs> I mean, that was the... Is that what you're talking about? That's what I'm station? talking about. So those are strains, and they may still be available. But the science has oh gotten... Oh, boy, did you make me feel old. No, no. <laughs> they may still be available. They, they may be, but now there has been so much progress in, by home grows and by, un unfortunately, yet fortunately, the black market that have diversified mm. these, these strains and made them stronger or weaker for higher THC or lower THC, higher CBD or lower CBD. And there's, there's so much work that has been done. And it's that, that undercurrent that has really driven the medical. the medical side of it. Well, is there any country in the world? I heard Israel. When I was looking at this, Israel has done a lot of research on the medical benefits of marijuana. Absolutely. I mean, is, that, is, there any, is there any other country like that? What about Canada? Canada has done some research. Their medical program is very strong. But most of the research, most of the well-respected and well-reputed research has come out of Israel. In fact, our organization, the Hawaii Dispensary Alliance, has released Hawaii's first white paper on medical marijuana. Really? For the development of the industry, what it means, where we've come from, where we would like to see it go, and how everyone can get involved. Well, you know, I know for myself and my generation, speaking for probably the person who, who sent me the, the, the tweet. Yes, sir. Um, neither, I'm glad that somebody in my generation knows how to tweet. But in any way, um, you know, we would be a whole lot more comfortable. We would be a whole lot more comfortable if the evidence about the benefits of medical marijuana was not so, um, you know, just uh, based on stories. Sure. Uh, in, in that there was actual uh, research. Now, I have met a number of people, people that, uh, highly respectable people who are in fact using medical marijuana and who find it as the only thing that, uh, that they uh, seems to benefit them. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, I've become at least uh, neutral, or yeah, probably a little bit more than neutral, a little bit uh, plus neutral on the subject. But it would sure make me a whole lot more comfortable if we were a little bit more scientific about it. I understand this. that. Now, let's answer, answer the tweet real fast. Okay. The Medical Cannabis Coalition of Hawaii has a Facebook page and a website, and they're partnered with the Drug Policy Forum of Hawaii. Well, tell them where, where to get there. Medical Coalition, Medical Cannabis Coalition of Hawaii is a resource that you can check out on Facebook, and you can also go to the Drug Policy Forum of Hawaii. Um, they have a website and a Facebook page that will that work hand in hand, and they can direct you to finding those resources um, locally. And then, of course, just doing general research on the internet will provide you with a lot of those answers. But back to what you're speaking to about the legitimacy of the industry and the legitimacy of the scientific presentation. Right. So we need that. Everybody needs that. And it's not only your generation, but my generation as well. Okay. And the younger generations that need the assurance that this is going to benefit them and that it's not going to be a traumatic experience um, or a terrible social experiment. Well, you know, one of the... One of the fears, and, and I have to confess, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I was very concerned about it. One of the fears is the relationship between uh, marijuana and other drugs. You know, being, the, 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 the story was that if, that marijuana was a kind of an entry drug into a worse 
uh, situation. Uh, is there any, uh, I mean, and I'm worried about that. I am worried about that. I understand that. that. And those statistics, when you were holding office. Right. But um, they haven't been, they weren't necessarily fact-checked then. You're right. And I then mean, since then, that same point of discussion has continued to swirl and gone unchecked. I did ask, though, even back then, mm -hmm. it seemed more logical to me that drinking uh, was more connected to, you know, other, or at least just as connected sure. and then, as an entry drug to uh, worse things. And as a former smoker. Yeah, and smoking, exactly. absolutely, absolutely. So, Let's consider now that the latest development... And believe me, I want you to know the cigars that I used to smoke probably cost as much as any <laughs> marijuana that you have on the market. <laughs> I believe you. I believe you. Well, let's also consider that most of, um, most of America's and perhaps even the world's addiction is to painkillers, to, to prescription oh, drugs. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And Absolutely. They're not getting as much, they've never gotten as much heat as this industry Oh, does, you're, you're absolutely right. I was just reading industry. an article about that. Exactly. So we're slowly starting to make the change and the transition, recognizing that medical marijuana isn't necessarily uh, the devil's weed, if you will. Marijuana in general is not. That those prescription drugs are really kind of the heart of it. I think, yeah. And marijuana has been successfully proven in a number of case studies to combat what opioid about, addiction. You know, there's this thing about drunken driving, okay? You know, people shouldn't drive in, when they're drunk and all of this. Right. Are we just introducing a new kind of intoxication that's going to make things dangerous on the highways? I don't believe so. And Colorado just hit the two-year mark of having recreational marijuana available and their rates of drunk driving have gone down significantly. But has anybody gotten into like bad accidents as a result of uh, smoking uh, recreational marijuana? Not that I know but I'm not the authority on that. Well I gotta tell you I was flying home on an airplane mm -hmm. sitting next to a guy from Seattle. Okay. And I sort of asked them the same question, you know, and I guess Washington State also has... Uh, They've gone recreational, right. yes, sir. So we're sitting next to each other, and I was telling him that, you know, he because I said I was from Hawaii, mm -hmm. and he said, oh, Hawaii's going to do, you know, blah, 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 licenses and so forth. Mm -hmm. and, he, and I said, well, you know, a little bit worried about whether people are going to get around. He said, no, 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 the guy that just smoked, the, you know, if you drink and drive, you go out and speed and you, get you end up killing somebody and, yeah. you know but the guy who just got through smoking is the guy you catch at the stoplight watching the colors change <laughs> waiting for a pizza you know i don't so, know if <laughs> that, that's one way to put it i don't know if it's accurate but just like any medicine that you take that has a sedative effect you're not mm -hmm. supposed to drive you take a painkiller do not operate heavy machinery you take your medical marijuana again do not operate heavy machinery so it's i believe it's just the same as that and people should indulge themselves in in this medicine in an appropriate in an appropriate way. situation exactly. well when we come back and we're going to need to take a break again when we come back i really want to get into what was happening in hawaii Great. you know the licenses what are they for uh, some idea of what happens next and, and the rest. So yes, sir. Everybody stay with us. We'll be right back for the facts. Hi, I'm Chris Letham here with Think Tech Hawaii, and I invite you to watch my show, The Economy and You, each Wednesday at 3 o'clock um, here in Hawaii on OC16. We look forward to seeing you. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Kawei Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m. We address issues of importance for those of us who live here on the most isolated landmass on the planet. Please come join me Fridays at 3 p.m. Mahalo. I'm Jay Fidel, and I'm the host of Research in Manoa, Mondays from 12 to 1 on thinktechhawaii.com. Take a look at us and learn about uh, geophysics, learn about planetology, learn about the ocean and earth sciences at UH Manoa. You'll really enjoy it. So come around, we'll see you then. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihei. Today we have an exciting show. We are discussing the devil's weed. 
no longer, no longer the devil's weed, Mar medical marijuana. And we have with us today, Christopher Goth, who is the executive director of the Hawaii Dispensary Alliance. Well, Christopher, we are back on air and I'm really interested because it appears that Hawaii has now entered a, a, a new industry. So uh, recently there were eight licenses given out. What does a license consist of? I mean, what, what do you get to do if you received one of these licenses? Sure, uh, good question, Governor. So the eight licenses provide for a, an operation to grow and dispense, to sell okay. medical marijuana. And it's a vertically integrated market where... So grow, dispense. Correct. So you, you do everything. You have to do everything in-house. How regulated is that? Incredibly regulated. It's very safe. It's very secure. The penalties for diversion are swift and harsh. So there's no... There shouldn't be any worry about the product getting into the wrong hands or being sold out the back door. Or, furthermore, product Being from, sold to somebody without a marijuana card. Yes, sir. Exactly. Or even, for that matter, someone growing without having a license and then shipping it and selling it out of a dispensary. Okay. All of the precautions have been made by the legislature in this session as well as the last. And our organization is very, very proud of what the legislature has done. Some of the people that I was uh, re helping raise some financing for. Yes, sir. Um, talked about the regulation going from leaf to sale or something like seed that. Seed to sale is the Seed? Problem. Yes, sir. Seed to sale. Mm -hmm. So you got to know the number of seeds that you plant and where it goes More after or less, it's more or less. The department has done a very good job taking the lead of other states with a seed to sale tracking method. Seed to sale. Yes, sir. Which implies that you have to have, you can only have a certain number of adult and mature plants, which is... 3,000 per operation. Now, let's keep in mind, each licensee has the opportunity to have two grow facilities as well as two retail facilities. Okay, two grow facilities. Yes, um, and I heard there was a limitation on the number of plants. 3,000 plants. So a total of potentially 6,000 plants. 6, well, let me ask you about plants. plants. Okay. Okay. Because when we were burning the marijuana fields, yes, sir. the plants were little trees. Okay. I mean, so you got to grow 6,000 trees, right? And you have the opportunity to between split between two grow facilities. And what, by the way, what does that mean? Does that mean they, they have to be separate? Does that mean they have to be... I don't know. What does it mean? Which one has to be separate? When you say two grow facilities. Exactly. Okay, so let's consider... Well, why not have just said 6,000 plants as opposed to 2,000, I mean, two facilities, 3,000 plants each? I'm not exactly sure why the legislature chose that language. Okay. But it allows probably... Well, we all wonder what the legislature thinks, but in this case, there was no indication. I'm sure in your gubernatorial capacity, you were thinking the exact same thing <laughs> Yeah, they wondered time. about me, too. <laughs> Since he's hot, too high up in the building, you know, he must be, uh, must be high. <laughs> I <laughs> hope not. Something like that, you know, <laughs> because he's burning all these fields and the smoke is going up. But there. you had to. You had no. to do that. Well, yeah. No, but, you know, it, uh, it, it, times change. Yes, sir. And, and hopefully and it gets better. So, but the, you, there's no, is there, I'm just trying to find out the rhyme or reason for the kind of licenses they issued. So they issued a one license. You, you're responsible from the seeds. You got to grow two facilities. You have an opportunity. I mean, two mm -hmm. grow sites, um, which may or may not be the same place. Correct. Uh, and uh, you get to grow 6,000 plants, which may or may not be trees. Right. So we're going to find this all out. And then the, that somehow processed, in fact, is it processed? It will be processed. Into, has, into what? Into buds that are smoked? or Buds uh, that are smoked, um, oils that you can take in capsules. You never did explain what texture, text, whatever, tinch, tincture. Tinctures, mm -hmm. or what, what is that? Tincture would be something in a dropper that you take orally. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. so you just drop it in. Yes, sir. Uh, what about, um, uh, okay, brownies? So no edibles in this round. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So no edibles in, in Hawaii. No edibles in Hawaii. The only thing that you can have that's close is 
a hard candied lozenge. A lozenge? Yes, sir. So like you take like uh, the little Vix things. Mm -hmm. And then you get two, um, uh, this, two stores. Yes, sir, two stores. And uh, are there any requirements about th the stores? There are zoning requirements. So you can't be too close to a playground or a school. You can't be with children, are you? Correct. Mm -hmm. Is there any, pre I mean, is there any precedent in the regulatory scheme, uh, for example, we have been regulating liquor. Right. For not necessarily always well, but the state has been regulating liquor for, you know, since... Uh, Almost the last hundred years. Yeah. Uh, since, you know, somebody bought a bottle of rum to Hawaii, you know, something. Yes, sir. So you, you, you have that. And so is, there, is it the same kind of thing where you, the way that we regulate liquor, uh, is that applicable to the way this, uh, this industry has been looked at? It will be. It will be. And um, right now we have the Department of Health. We have Department of Public Safety, which will help oversee that. Um, of course, our local law enforcement will be involved at the county level. Yeah, yeah and that's another thing. What does, a, what does the local law enforcement people do? I mean, in terms of you get there, you see this plan. It's legal in Hawaii, but you know there's a federal law against it. Sure. So, I mean, what happens? Does the, uh, uh, um, the policeman still... Uh, issues uh, arrest somebody or well the police aren't going to nab you for a federal crime if you evade your taxes the police aren't going to come okay and say hey oh boy you didn't pay your income tax you have a way of bringing up the next subject okay taxes yes sir so i'm assuming you got to pay tax on this whole thing yeah absolutely. i mean if it's a legitimate business so you definitely we know that the city and county is going to get four and a half percent for to help the rail correct and as a supporter of the real, unlike Ben, maybe there's some good in if there's this after all. Well, you know? with the rail, you and I see eye to eye. Okay, thank so you. I was with Council Chair Todd Apo, and Oh, terrific. We so them. they're going to be paying 4.5%. That's obvious, okay? Correct. Uh, the state income tax, they can do it. They're going to have to do that. What happens to the federal income tax? Federal income tax is tricky. So there are... There are no exemptions, no exceptions. Okay, everybody it, has to pay taxes. Everybody has Even to pay. Even Al Capone had to pay taxes, exactly. right? So. And there is not going to be any tax breaks, no tax incentives when you're involved in this industry. You can't So you do don't it. have any subsidy, like no uh, opportunity we used for to subsidies, have for sugar. Correct. No write-offs, no, mm. no business expenses that you'll be able to... So you've got to pay full bore off whatever money you make, pay taxes. Absolutely. Now, having paid the tax, mm -hmm. uh, I, this is, brings up the next situation is, you know, do I write a check or do I carry all the cash from my uh, dispensary? It depends on who your bank is. Yeah, can I have a, may I have a bank <laughs> if I own a, a license? We're, our organization is vetting banking solutions and what that means... That's one of the reasons for your being Exactly, there. exactly. So when we go back to the services that we provide for creating an industry, right. one of those um, business development solutions is providing financial resources, or I'm sorry, providing financial institution resources to these components of the industry. So, so often the big banks, the local banks here or on the mainland say, I'm sorry, it's it's too much of a risk to take on a single individual that is involved in medical marijuana or even recreational marijuana. It puts our entire portfolio at risk. And that means that all of our account holders, big or small, could potentially have their assets frozen if another bank reports us to the federal government. Wow. Just for taking on a single medical marijuana or recreational client. Mm. So it's not worth their time. It's not worth their effort to do the compliance, to regulate, to set up those SOPs. But isn't it kind of dangerous to have all this cash without a bank to take it to? It is, but the Hawaii Dispensary Alliance is fairly certain that we're close You're to finding... You're going to have a solution? Yes, sir. Well, um, for those of you that are interested, this is the guy you've got to see if you need a place to put your money.
and so that you can pay your taxes. Exactly. You know, I, I have a sort of a semi interest in people paying taxes. Yeah. So let me let, let me tell you. Okay, I, I will I'll get a little controversial. Okay. Uh, a little bit. Um, there were sixty six applicants. Yes, sir. Sixty six applications. Fifty nine Application. applicants. Fifty nine applicants. Yes, sir. Eight got a license. Correct. Now, I, um, if I, I know a little bit about procurement. Okay. And any situation like this that uh, tends to invite litigation, sure. or invite, invite protest. Yes, sir. Are you expecting any dissatisfaction uh, with the, uh, the system? We have already experienced a little bit of discomfort, disease, um, non-content with the way that it's been run by the Department of Health. Our organization has been working as closely with them as possible to avoid as much litigation as possible. But it is potentially inevitable. Yes. Oh, inevitable. Right. So, um, yeah, and so I guess it's evolving now. One of the, I, I think I read this in the newspaper, one of the suggestions yes, sir. was that the applications be like listed so that people or or at least the information given to others so at least they know how good they did correct now our conversations with the department of health even as recent as today provide that they will release the merit-based evaluations within the next few days a date has not yet been determined but as their spokesperson janice okubo said the scores will be available. We were anticipating that they would be available last Friday, um, only because the department made the announcement that potentially the scores could be available two weeks after the announcement, which happened April 29th. Okay. So the field was kind of waiting and watching, and everyone's getting a little bit itchy. We're hoping that they release well, those. Yeah, because there was this suggestion that if everything was sort of um, listed, then if, if new licenses were to open up, there'd yes, be a sort of a waiting list. Like, but then, you know, I remember Hawaiian homes, and you don't, I don't know what good waiting lists are. I understand. Know. Yeah, I, I appreciate the perspective. And what, what our organization has promoted since the opening of the application period is that if you don't receive a license in the first round, there might be something for you in the future. There will certainly be something in the future. Either that or go get Medicaid. <laughs> <laughs> well, only there will be something for you eventually in the future, only for the fact that we have an opportunity to revisit the number of licenses in 2017. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We'll have um, reciprocation with other states in yeah, 2018. This, this, this is what uh, I was going to ask you, the future. Yes, sir. Reciprocation. What right. does that mean? It means that if you have a medical marijuana card from another state, or perhaps another nation, uh -huh. you'll be able to use that here in Hawaii. Thousands of Japanese tourists coming in with little cards. I don't know if they're going to get those, you, you but know, soon, you, you. actually the medical program is starting to gain a little bit of traction in Japan. Well, let me ask you a question. You yes, see sir. the day when, we, uh, when Hawaii might be getting into um, recreational marijuana? You know, that question comes up often I can't speak to that. Right now we're focusing strictly on launching a very productive... So your job is to focus in on a productive medical marijuana industry. Well-run medical marijuana industry. And if anybody out there has any questions, call the Hawaii Dispensary, Dispensary Alliance. Alliance. Shoot Ask for Christopher yes, sir. Um, Garth personally. And his email address is... Christopher at HawaiiDispensaryAlliance.org. And get him a... Get him an email. So thank you very much all for uh, letting us bring you this very interesting subject. We thank you for watching. Chris, uh, great to have you here. Governor, thank it's been a pleasure. Thank you for a good show. Thank you, sir. Thank you.